Okay, so welcome to, to our uh, Zoominar. Uh, today, we're very happy to have Eduardo Fernandez from UJ uh, talking about cabling families of Legendrian and Vetex. Okay, great. So, thank, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation. I'm, I'm a, a huge YouTube fan of your channel. I watch all the videos. I'm really happy to be here speaking. So today I'm going to speak about, about legendary embedding spaces and everything that I'm going to say is, is a young world with Hyunimin, which is a UCLA. Okay. So first I'm going to try to, 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 to say or explain what is known about legendary embedding spaces by itself. So the problem, the problem, the motivation to study these kind of things or the motivation that they have. Okay. So most of the things that I'm going to, to say today work in any tight contact tree manifold. I'm I'm going just to focus on the standard standard contact tree sphere, with the standard contact structure is defined as the field of complex tangencies. Here the I is the complex multiplication in C2. So associated to this contact manifold, there are two two natural spaces of interest. The first one is is, is the space of laying and embeddings. Okay, yes, I, I recall. So these are embeddings. We can we, we are going to speak also about about links but just for definition is an embedding of s1 into s3 into s3 into s3 that are always tangent to two side okay so gamma prime at t always lies inside gamma t. so the, the the tangent vector is always in the standard contact structure and the other natural space these are really so the name main spaces, which is which is a really geometric object and is really important in contact topology and symplectic topology in every dimension. And the other natural space, which is is less known, but it's the space of formal lane and embedding. This is just a, a topological gadget. Okay. And just a recall what is a formal lane and embedding. So I'm going to, to write quickly the definition. It's, it's kind of a pair, gamma fs, where gamma is a smooth embedding. And F is, 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 is a deformation of the tangent vector of gamma that moves the vector at every point to psi. Okay, so it's kind of legendary and up to homotopy. So I, I'm going to write it. So it's something like this. And um, this goes to S3. Like this, here we have gamma. S, S lies in zero one. And it's an homotopy of, of bundle monomorphisms covering the, the embedding. At a time zero, it starts at the differential, and at time one, sends the tangent space of the knot to side. Okay. In, in higher dimensions, you should you should you should require that the time the, the, the image of the tangent space of the submanifold is Lagrangian in the contact plane, in the contact distribution, in dimension three that is for free. Okay, so just a picture of what is this, which is the best thing to keep in mind. You have like gamma here, maybe at this point. Psi looks like this, it's kind of perpendicular, or that is what I'm trying to do in this picture, to show you in this picture. Here is the tangent vector, and f of s is just an homotopy between this guy and something that lies inside. This is f1, which lies inside at the point p. Okay, and that at every point. And that is the space of formal linear invariants, the space of, of all such a pairs. The whole point is that this 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 thing here is really is really Easy, 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 easy is a, a word that I do not like. Okay, but it's kind of you can understand it. Okay, from by using algebraic topology and smooth topology, easy to understand. Okay, so associated to this this pair of spaces, there is an inclusion. Okay, every legendary is naturally formally legendary because you can take just the form the constant homotopy. You don't need to move anything. And kind of the, the H principal problem or the this general problem is what is the behavior of the induced maps by this inclusion or multiple groups. Okay. So this is the, the, the problem that motivates everything. So for example, for, for pi zero, for k equals zero, the, the injectivity of this map say that two legendians is, is studying if two legendians that are formally isotopic. So there's no homotopy obstruction to move one legendian into the, the another, the other, if those two legendians are actually legendian isotopic. 
okay, which is kind of the, the famous theorem, classification of legend and nodes. So what do we know about, about this thing, about this problem? So we know first for k equals zero, which is the problem that I just said, the classical problem. So here is trying to study legendrians up to up to legenda isotopy and doing that through through the lens of, of the space of formal legendrians. So first some fact to understand what, what, what I'm going to say. So two legendrians. Gamma zero and gamma one. An homotopic through formal legendrians. So I'm going to say formally isotopic to, to express that or formally legendrian isotopic. They are isotopic smoothly as a smooth nodes. And then uh, to, to the two classical invariants of both are the, okay, the rotation number and the fast numerical number. It's kind of a well-known fact. So 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 but pi zero of the space of formal legendas is given by the by the smooth isotopic class and two numbers, rotation and fast numerical. And two legendas are formal isotopic if they lie in the same path component of the, the space of formal legendas. So what do we know? So studying the map at, at, for, at the level of path connected components is trying to classify legendas up to legendas isotopy. So what do we know about this map? So this this kind of this kind of there have been a lot of research about classifying the legendas in the last 30 years, and there's still a lot of research. So the first thing that we know is that it's not subjective. Okay, it's a super famous. Theorem of Benekan. This is what is known as Benekan, Benekan inequality. And, and this was later analyzed by, by Elias Bertwani tight contact free manifold. Well, today we're in street, but many things work in any tight contact free manifold. This is not subjective. And we also know that this is not injected by, by, by some examples of Chekano using legenda and contact homology. So Chekano was able to define an invariant. For, for legendas that is called legendian and contact homology and use this invariant to distinguish between two legendas that were formal isotopic, proving that they were not legendian isotopic. So the induced map in the, at the level of path components is not injected. However, we, we, can, we can try to, to relax the question and say, okay, I'm going to fix the smooth, not tight. I'm going to fix this data. And let's try to, to, to understand the, the restriction of the previous map in this subspace. So here, here, this just means that the smooth data is fixed to be K. Okay, well, K is any smooth dot type or smooth link type. And the same for the space of formal legendas. And in that case, sometimes you, you can also prove the injectivity of the map. Okay, the first examples were given by Elias Vera Fraser for, for the knot. They proved that the map is injective, and, and even better, they proved that they, they classify, determine the image of, of that map. Okay, the image is just going to be a bunch of a bunch of pairs of numbers, rotations, and TV. And they actually determine the whole image of that map. The second examples or, or that, that I know historically were given by Edna Yaronda and, and were about torus nodes. Okay. So in the in this these kind of cases, the this kind of node types for which this map is injective, and we can uh, we, we say that the the, the node type is legend and symbol. Okay. An instrumental technique to prove all these kind of things. So, so the way of proving all these kind of classification results in the study of, of legendrians is usually is, is by studying surfaces and, and contact three manifolds. Okay, at the time in which this paper was written, the, the, there was not yet convex surface theory fully developed. But but now nowadays, how do we study surface in contact in contact three manifolds by using Giroux convex surface theory? Okay, it's instrumental technique for all the Classification results. Great. So this is kind of K equals zero. Classification up to legend and isotopy. So now what do we know about K bigger than zero? So families of legend and embeddings. Okay. K equal one speaks about, about loops of legend and embeddings and so on. So for K bigger than zero, the, the, we, we know very little. Okay? And, and almost all the questions are still open. But we know a few things. So which are the following. So the first one, which is kind of a folk statement, that, that is in the final statement was proved by Fustavaznikov, and, and then the general case appeared in a paper of Casals and Pino, and also in, in Marcy's paper of, of loose legendas, is that if the base point, so, so to speak about, about pi k, we need to fix a base point, okay, a legendar. 
So if the base point is sufficiently stabilized, by this I mean it has a lot of double zigzags like that, and then the map in, in homotopy groups is subjective. Okay, that is something that we know. And we also know that this is not subjective in general. It's kind of Venecan type, type thing. It's not subjective in general. There are, there are Legendian knots for which that if you take those knots as, as the base point, the map is not subjective on, on pi k to the space of formal Legendians. You cannot generate every formal class that you want. And we also know, this, this is my work of, of myself together with Javier Martinez Aguinaga and Francisco Presas. And we also know in the same work, it's, it's also proven that the map could become injective, and we can determine its, its image for some base points, in particular for the legendary knot, when we satisfy this relation between the Tarton Beneca and the rotation number. Okay. And also in that same paper, we also proved the same statement for, for, for maximal TVs uh, and, and torus links. Okay, this is basically. This is basically n copies of, of the standard legendian. So there is a natural, a natural legendian hot vibration, and you take n fibers of this, in which the fibers are standard knots with custom medical minus one. You take n different fibers, and that is this guy. Okay. So what remains open, so, so the subjectivity depends on the base point. This is the takeaway. Depends a lot on the base point. And what remains open is, is the injectivity. It's a kind of example. We, we, we don't know. There are no examples of, of loops or spheres of legendians that are formally contractible. So they are contractible in the space of formal legendians, but not contractible. Okay. We don't know about that. And what are we going to cover today? So this is kind of my, my interest is solving this problem. Or, or, so, or proving that it's impossible to find it for KB around that zero, which I don't think that should be the answer, but proving that. Any answer to that question? This is my motivation. And today we're going to prove, we're going to see places where not to look for such a base point. Okay. So we're going to see that under cabling operation, uh, usually what you get is, is, is base points for which the map becomes injected on pi k. Okay. So you cannot solve the problem by you taking cables. Maybe you could expect to take cables and produce something interesting from a geometric point of view, and we're going to prove that it's not the case. Okay. If you have any question at any point, just yes, stop me. We'll be happy to try to answer. Great. So this is kind of the problem. What I'm going to speak today. Places were not to look for such a base point. So let's keep going. So the main results. So to speak about the main results. To, to, to describe these places where not to look about the for that base point, we, we need to recall what is a cable. So here you have the definition written that basically is 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 I'm going to do a picture. You can you can you can read the definition if you, if you prefer it. So you have a knot K like this, and you consider a tular neighborhood like that. Of course, like this, basically. You define this to be new. You trivialize this by using a cipher, cipher, ciphers, and you define this to be lambda. So a PQ cable is basically a, a, a node that goes p times in this direction and, and q times in this direction. So an example of this is just a generalization of what is a PQ torus knot. Okay, when the node that you start with is, is an node and you do a PQ cable, you define a PQ torus knot. Uh, but you can do it in general. For, for any for any smooth knot. It's a smooth operation of knots. And here this is a technical definition. So we are going to say that the, the, the well the slope of the cable is q over p and, and we are going to say that the cable is sufficiently positive for p is, is sufficient positive for, for k if 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 this slope is bigger than the maximal custom mechanical of k plus one. Okay. This number here, this T V with a variable is just pick any any legendian representative this guy of k uh, and, and and take the maximum of all the custom possible custom Benekans of that guy. We know that that is bound by the work of Benekan. Okay, so just pick the, the biggest one. So if, if you have this inequality here, then we say that it's sufficiently cable, uh, sufficiently positive. Okay, and what is an MPNQ cable? 
So it's basically the same definition, but now now these two two guys are not co-prime and not relative prime. So so you take n copies of the PQ node associated parallel copies on the, on the torus. Okay. Great. So what can we say about these kind of things? Why do we care about sufficiently positive cables? So the main reason is that that this has been extensively studied the last 20 years, starting by Edna and, and, and Onda. But the, the general, the most general result, the most general classification for these kind of things was given recently by Chakaborty, Edna, and Min. Min is my, my co-author. And, and sufficiently positive legend and cables can be classified in terms of, of the underlying legend and not your cabling. What is important for us today is that the Max TV. If you have a legend that is Max TV, a Max TV representative of, of the legend PQ cable, we, if, if it is sufficiently positive, appears in a standard neighborhood of your legend. Okay. When I say a standard neighborhood, N, I just mean that N is, is N with the contact structure is J1 of S1 side standard. Okay. You pick this, this TV section. So, so by Weinstein, you can always find such a neighborhood. And vice versa, if you have a PQ cable sufficiently positive, which is Max TV, it appears in the standard neighborhood of some Max TV representing on the underlying node that you're cabling. Okay, we have relations between the Thaston Menekan of, of both. And, and what is more important for us is that this is a precise model in this story, in this torus, in which you can find the cable. So basically, that torus is going to be foliated by 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 legendians, all of them realizing the the PQ car in the Max TV case, and and LPQ, it is legendian Max TV is going to be one of those of those legendians that appear in the torus. In particular, we have a natural S1 axiom on the space of cables that is given just by by rotating like this. Okay, in the new direction. It's an S1. And we like to call that S1 generalized Kalman loop. Okay, so this is L. So let's slow down. So we have L here. This is L. Somewhere here you are going to have the LPQ. And you can assume that the, the full torus is foliated by, by curves that are parallel to LPQ, all of them laying there. So you can rotate in the mu direction, and that gives you an S1 of legend and embeddings. And that is one, we, we call it generalized Kalman loop. Why we call it in this way? Because the first one of realizing about this, such a loop for torus nodes, not for, for general cable, but for torus nodes was Kalman 20 years ago. And he proved that this loop for positive torus node uh, was non-contractible. And he proved it by using Legend and contact homology, okay, with families. Kind of the takeaway of today is something that we already know is that Kalman loop and every generalized Kalman loop is going to be non-contractible at the formal level inside the space of legend and embedding. So you don't need to use legend and contact homology to prove that they are non-trivial. Okay. In any case, the, 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 the Kalman's computation gives you much more information because it gives information about the associated Lagrangian that you can beat, and that is not covered by your work. It's complementary. So what is the theorem? That if you, if you, the main theorem, the first version, the version for knots, that if you start with a max TV legendia, max TV legendia, and you consider the LPQ cable, which is sufficiently positive at max TV, everything that you can find new in, in, the, in the space of legendia in veins of the cable is this generalized Kalman loop. Okay, there is a weak equivalence. So whenever I write this symbol, I, I just means weak homotopy equivalence between the space of the Yenian cables and S1. This is the generalized Kalman loop times the space of, of the Yenian invariance of the underlying legend. Okay, the way of going from here to here is basically by, by proving that if you have a, a, a family of legend, you can cable all of them at the same time. And that is also a consequence of. Weinstein tool and neighborhood theory that works with parameters. So you cannot find anything new. Great. So, so this result and then the why why we, we thought that this could be true, it, it was not by a by a 
by an accident is because there is a well-known result in for smooth loan embeddings. Long, we will speak later about loan embeddings. And we will have the same formula. If you have a non-trivial of Hatcher, this is a theorem of Hatcher. If you have a non-trivial cable, then the space of long smooth cables is somewhat equivalent to S1 times the space of embeddings of the underlying node. Everything with the adjective long in the front. Okay, so what is important from this sentence and the takeaway for you, from you is that this S1 action is nothing but topology. Okay, it's a topological thing. So in particular, if you try to, to, to answer the question that we were speaking about before, the injectivity of the map, uh, the injectivity between the space of cables, uh, the space of laying and cable, from the space of laying and cables to the space of power, so to the space of formal laying ends, is equivalent to injectivity of the of the space of laying ends of the, the laying invariance of the base into a space of formal laying and invariance of the base. And also the non-injectivity. You cannot find anything new from here, from this operation, from a from a geometric perspective, from a three-dimensional geometric perspective, not four-dimensional geometric perspective. Great. And also a nice application, or an application that I like, is that if you start with with L a custom mechanical minus one and not, so it's like just me. This guy. Okay. My favorite guy. That's the minimum minus one and not. This is Max TV. And you cable it. So many times by sufficiently positive cables. Then we have a concrete expression of what is a motopy type of that space of embeddings. Okay. This is what is this follows basically from, from the fact that we know the motopy type of the space of Lagenian embeddings of this and not. And it's a motopy current to you too. This should be thought as Lagrangian planes in, in C2. Or... I also like to call it the Legendian grade circle. So it's basically a point in a street and a vector that is a combination between J, between J times the point and K times the point. And I'm speaking about quaternions. So that is a, a matrix in U2. And that gives you canonically a Legendian. And that Legendian is a TV minus one and not. And that is everything that you have by, by my work together with Javier and Frank. So by using this formula and applying this, this homotopy equivalence and applying the, the or main theorem, you, you obtain this result. Okay, it's a nice consequence. So for torus nodes, positive torus nodes, you, you just have, you need to raise this and you, you just have one as one, which is Kalman's loop. It's everything that you do. Okay, great. So, that is the first version of the main theorem, and now I'm going, I'm going to, 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 to state in full generality what are we able to say. So I need to introduce some notation. This is kind of, this kind of a lot of symbols. I don't, I don't like it. I'm sorry about that. But this is just a generalization of the cable operation. So we're going to define cables for, for links. So first, we're going to see to say that one times a knot is a knot, and zero times a knot is the empty set. And also a zero, zero cable is the empty set. Now, if you give me a link of n components and the following data, which is a, a set of n numbers between zero and one, and this um, a set of n cable coefficients, then you can you can define the generalized BC cable of L. That is basically you use this this number between zero and one, and you multiply by by the underlying link, and then you cable each link with each coefficient that you have. Okay. So, for example, let's see. So you start by doing this. Right. right. Thank you. Okay, a toy example. This is the, the, the guy that is drawn at the at the my first slide. So the red guy is the standard layer and not this thing. Wait, U. And then the, the link that I just draw, that LBC, is basically LBC is obtained by cabling with coefficient one and then the the b is one in this case so you multiply by the knot and then the the cabling coefficient is two three okay 
So if you do that with the standard liner node, you obtain this link that is called cipher link. So it's a toy example. So we're going to say that these things are sufficiently positive if all the cables are sufficiently positive, which is kind of the natural definition, or they are empty, which is they have the CO0. Right? Great. So this is kind of a, a generalization of the pre previous cable operation. So what can we say about these guys? I, I need to introduce a bit of more notation. It's going to sound strange, but hopefully it will make sense in a second. So given a legenda, we're going to consider the, the, the complement of the legenda. So we're going to take out a standard neighborhood of the legenda. So it's going to be contactomorphic to, to a bunch of J1s of S1s in the case of links. And we're going to study, we're going to think about the space of contact structures in this complement that coincide with the standard one, with the one that we already have near the complement, and are isotopic to the standard one relative boundary. Okay, so we are definition. We are going to say that the legend satisfies the C property if this guy is contractible. Okay, and why? Why? Why do I define such? Do I define such a thing? The reason is that if a legend satisfies the C property, then these guys are injected. This homomorphism, the homomorphism from the space of of so from pi k of the space of legend embedding based at L into the corresponding space of formal legend and embedding is injected for all k. Okay, that is the only motivation to define this C property. And this, and this, this, this I should be said. So I said at the beginning that everything works in almost every tight contact field manifold. This is for S3 with a standard contact structure. In general, you cannot say the same. You cannot derive the same conclusion. You can derive something similar. So, what is our, our, our really our main theorem of, of, of me and um, um, me? Is that if you start with a max TV legend and you take this sufficiently positive max uh, gen, uh, generalized cable and you take a max TV representative of it, then the, the homotopy type of the space of contact structures in the complement does not change. Okay? You don't create anything geometric at the level of contact structures in the complement. Nothing changes. Okay, and why this is fun? So, so it's fun because if you start with L that satisfies the C property, in particular, this is injective or okay, and you do this operation, you still satisfy the C property. So it's still injective for okay. Okay, that is kind of the the the, the mental game that that we are going to follow. So. So I'm going just to repeat that. So by starting with, with a, an L that satisfies the C property, for example, the TV minus one, the and are not, satisfies the C property. You start doing this operation in an iterative in a, many times, and you obtain infinite many components of the space of Legendians, for which it's impossible to find families of Legendians that are formally contractible, that are formally contractible, but non-contractible, okay? There's no, no geometry from a 3D perspective on those components of the space of layering embeddings. So a nice example, I, I learned this from, from, from a paper of, of, of Guillermo Casals, that is a smooth fact, is that if you have an algebraic link, so, so we have a polynomial from C2 to C, and you consider the link of the singularity, that is usually, that is transverse with respect to the standard contact structure, generally, but you can legendarize it, and you consider the max TV the max TV representative of that algebra thing. That is a generalized Legendian cable. So it's impossible to find anything exotic from this point of view for Legendian algebra links with the max TV. Okay, another special case are max TV positive cipher fiber Legendian links. So, so what, what I mean by this, so a, a link in S3 is basically is cipher fiber if the complement is cipher fiber. So examples of this are those nodes. Uh, so the cipher node, uh, cipher links, which is a link that I draw before, is basically a, tor to a torus link, torus links, not nodes, torus links, and then cipher cipher links, which is a torus link together with the with the node that you're cabling, and also cipher hof links, which is a torus link together with the hof link. Okay, it has multiple components. And also, and also a K chain link that was, this is something that was drawn in my first slide. This does not appear really as, as taking the, this sufficiently positive 
equation, but this is just this. So you pick an unknown. Is a cipher fiber. Cipher fiber links. So now you can consider positive cipher fiber links, which I just mean that when 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 we speak about torus links, you assume that P and Q, those those cables are sufficiently positive, which in the case of torus links just means that P and Q are both positive. Okay, and what do we have in this case? We have a really nice description of description of, of the complement of these guys, do by Edna, La Fontaine, and, and Pasun. And the complement is, is not just cipher fiber, it's Leyenne and cipher fiber for all these guys. So what I mean by that, the, the, the fibers of the cipher fibration, all of them are Leyenne. And the regular fibers are, are just torus knots. Okay. This is kind of so it's, it's intuitive from the fact that there is a Leyenne and fog fibration. You can this requires convex surface theory, but there is a Leyenne and fog fibration. With the fibers are TV minus one and not, and you can deform everything a bit to make to, to build this layer and cipher fiber spaces. Okay, so we have a, con a complete control about, about the complement of these guys, and, and, and using that, we are, we are able to fully describe the homotopy type of these spaces of layer and embeddings, and, and we describe it in terms of pure gray groups. Okay. This this should be compared. So so many of these these elements that appear in the description, I I, I didn't write wrote the description down because it's kind of confusing sometimes, at least for me. But some of these guys that appear also appear in the work of of, of Casals and Gao about infinitely many fields. They they for some examples of Max TV positive cipher fiber links, they were able to find some interesting loops. Those loops appear for us. Okay. The loops are interesting because of, of, of what they are able to prove about these loops in relation with B4, not with S3, because in S3 they are not super interesting. That is the takeaway from our talk. Great. So now I'm going to speak a bit about how how, how the flow of, of the proofs goes with, with all these things. So any question before I start? Okay, great. So how do we do do we attack the study of lane and main spaces? So basically what we do is to, is to follow what, what, what others did before to study smooth knots, smooth, smooth and main spaces. So we are going to 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 mimic what Barney and Hatcher, they, they, the study of smooth and main spaces has been done successfully by Barney and Hatcher in the last years, the last 30 years. It's a, a, big, a big amount of work. And the scheme is, is, is as follows. Okay. So we're going to consider the space of smooth embeddings. This is a quick review of what they did. The smooth embeddings that realize a knot type K. And this guy has a subspace that is what is called long smooth embeddings. Okay. These are just in S3. So here is S3. Here is P. Here is going to be B. So we are just requiring that all the knots that we have, all the beddings at time zero, pass, it, pass through P with velocity P. Okay. This is what is called a long embedding. Why well, it's called long? If, if, if you if you take the stereographic projection, you see the typical picture of a long embedding in, in R3. Okay. And these two spaces are related by a fiber agent, just sending gamma to the valuation at zero. Okay, so basically, instead of studying this thing, we are going to study. They study this thing. Why they do that? Because there is a vibration. There is a natural action of the diffeomorphism group. If you take a diffeomorphism of D three, understanding this as as a diffeomorphism of S three that is fixed, is fixed its identity near this point here, that naturally acts by post composition over the space of of non layer bands. Of, of long smooth knots. And therefore, if you take the orbit of one long smooth knot, you obtain a vibration. This is this is isotopy extension theorem. And the fiber is the diffeomorphism group of the complement. Okay. And whenever I write, I write 
div or cont or, or an open manifold, I really mean with compact support. So everything here is identity near the boundary and also here, okay, here and here. And the fact that you can write this as the fiber uses that you, they are working with, with long embeddings because if not, you can perform kind of non-trivial rotations on the normal directions. So big theorem, the total space of this vibration is contractible. It's a big theorem of Thatcher. It's a conjecture in dimension three. So what is the takeaway? The takeaway is that instead of studying the homotopy type of this thing, we can study the homotopy type of the different motion group. That may be fit here, maybe not. It's a question of preference. For, for me, this is easier and study study families of knots. Okay, but that is the takeaway from the end from smooth embeddings to diffeomorphisms of the complex. So you can study just diffeomorphisms of the complex. There is a rich theorem about diffeomorphisms in three manifolds, and you can say a lot of things. Okay. So now what is, is the analog picture in the Legendian setting? So in the Legendian setting, we have for, also have a notion of, of long Legendian, which should require that B is in the contact plane at P. And we have the previous vibration, the same vibration. So you pick a Legendian, you evaluate at the origin, and now you're going to, to obtain some A and some, some P and some B. And yes, because of the definition of psi, P and B are going to be complex, linear, independent. We call that we are in psi standard. In the standard context list here, which is defined as a space of field of complex tangencies. So these things, P and B are going to be complex linear independent. So basically, they're going to define a matrix. So you're going to have a map that goes to U2. They define a matrix in U2. And you can use this matrix to, to, to fix the base point of the Leyenda because U2 acts by contact homomorphism so on S3. So you have this map. And this is an homotopy equivalent. So the vibration that we had before in this case is, is more clean. Okay. And there's also an, a natural vibration of, of, of the group of contact homomorphisms. So this means contact homomorphisms, these homomorphisms that preserve psi into a space of long layer gaps, also by post composition. And that gives you an orbit map. And that orbit map is a vibration because of the contact is sort of extension theorem. And the fiber again. Is the space of the group of contact homomorphism that fix a regular neighborhood of the of the Legendian. Here we we to prove that you can write this as the fiber, we are not using the fact that the, the, the Legendian is long. Okay. Because any Legendian is naturally framed by the custom by, by the rep thing. And you can you cannot rotate the contact, the contact plane. So so you can assume this in the close case, so in the general case, taking out this thing. So what, what, what is important for us uh, about taking the space of long Leyenda instead of regular Leyenda is that this total space is also contractible by a theorem of Elias Bell and Misasset, by a theorem announced by Elias Bell many years ago and, and fully proved in full linearity by Elias Bell and Misasset like three years ago. Okay, this group is contractible. So again, take away, we, we can we can trade the, the space of Leyendians by the space of contact, the group of contact homomorphisms of the complement. So this is the first takeaway. Instead of right, looking to to the in many spaces, we look, we study contact homomorphism, the contact homomorphism group of the complement. And what is the second takeaway? And the second takeaway is that is that as a consequence of great stability, instead of looking to contact the contact homomorphism group of the complement, you can look at the space of contact structures on the complement. So yes, I'm going to uh, Make this clear. So you have a, a natural map from the diffeomorphism group, the subgroup of those diffeomorphisms that are isotopic to identity in a closed three manifold into a space of contact structures on that three manifold isotopic to a given one, just by, by, by pushing a contact structure. And this is a vibration. This is this play stability with parameters. This is a vibration. And the fiber is basically. Those contact those different those different morphisms which are contact. Okay, so it's is contact homomorphism that are smoothly stopic to identity. So up to pi naught of, of the group of contact homomorphisms, you can just focus on the space of contact structures. Okay, for, for because for me and, and, and my co-author in this paper, this is an input that we have. Okay, it's topology, so we are looking for geometry. So we, we don't really look too much about this. So instead of looking 
to the ENS, with membrane spaces, we can look to contactomorphism groups. And instead of looking to contactomorphism groups, we can look to, to the space of contact structures on the complement. And maybe that brings some light about the second main theorem that I, that I wrote. Why, by, why, why we look about contact structures on the complement to study the union embedding. Okay, great. So this is kind of the mental scheme. So now, how, how do we do this? So to classify the end up to up to the isotopy, convexity is, key, is the key, the key tool. So to do this thing with families, convexity is also or or, or Study, studying surface in, in contact three manifolds, families of surfaces, also the, the, the key tool. I'm going to, to just review quickly something about, about U convexity. In the, uh, the convex surface theory in 3D. So basically, if you have a, a surface in a contact three manifold, we say that that surface is, is convex if there is a contact vector field that is transverse to it. Okay, contact vector field means that the, the, the flow of the vector field preserves the contact structure and associated, and associated to this vector field. There's something that is called the dividing set that is conformed by those points in which the vector field is tangent. The vector field is, is tangent to side. Okay, x is tangent to side. So you should think that this is is when when the contact structure becomes perpendicular to to the to the surface. And here is the, is the what I like to call the Euro, three Euro magic theorems. That is, every surface can be perturbed to become convex. The dividing set or the isotopy class of this thing. Encodes, encodes, this is a, a deep statement, encodes all the contact topological information. This is called Euro flexibility. Okay, what I mean by that, so, so the contact topology near the surface is, is encoded by the characteristic position of the surface, which is how, how psi intersects the tangent space of the surface. So the takeaway is that if you have a, two surfaces that are convex and have the same dividing set abstractly, you can deform the characteristic formation of one into the other without moving the dividing set. So really, the contact topology is encoded by the dividing set. That is Euro flexibility, and this is a complete parametric statement. Okay, this is a really deep thing. It's not hard to prove, but it's, it's deep. And and the second, the third thing that is really useful in dimension three, and this is this is really a low dimensional thing. Now the last statement is that tightness. If you have something that is tight. You cannot have whatever configuration that you like for the dividing set. Okay. For, for example, if your surface is not a an sphere, the, the dividing set cannot have contractible components. If you do take away the, of, of convex of convex surface theory. And on and colon takeaway is that if you have a, a smooth isotopy, so you have sigma t smooth isotopy. And sigma zero, you have that sigma zero and sigma one are, are, are convex. Then, how are related the dividing sets? That is the only thing that we care about, are related by something that is called a, by a sequence of bypasses. So, so what is a bypass? So, this is the, the fancy definition is that is half an over twisted disk. The working definition that we're going to, to use today is that it's basically something that changes the dividing set by using this model. So it's a half an over twisted disk, really, that is attached to a curve like this. And when a bypass happens, the dividing set, which is the red thing, is gamma, changes by this, by this, by this movement. Okay. So it's a way of changing the topology, possibly changing the topology of the dividing set. Okay, and then this is this is this is everything that could happen, a sequence of these kind of movements. Okay, this is a, a non-parametric statement. This is why, why this is families of surfaces are hard, still hard on, on dimension three. Great. So how do we relate? Do we relate uh, the space of? Do we use all this stuff? So basically, we need to look at the, at the complement of of or and the complement of of the Leyenda table and try to relate the space of contact structures between, in the complement of both. So, so, so how do we do that? So the model that Saka brought through N I and mean give us to, for a sufficiently positive max TV and table is the following one. So I'm going to draw the picture of of, of a tori. 
pistola is the boundary of, of the standard neighborhood of, of a max TV not L. Okay, here you're going to have some dividing curves, which because you can see that this convex is going to be something like this. In the case here, I'm thinking that T is a standard length and a knot. It has TV minus one, so it has two dividing curves. And then the, the characteristic foliation of this thing, we can assume that it's foliated, fully foliated by, by the union PQ curve. So it, let's see if I can do this in a reasonable amount of time. So one, two, two, three. So let's do it for two, three. So the picture you want to see is something like this. Pick, pick, pick. And everything foliated by legendians that are parallel to the red guy. And the red guy is LPQ. In the picture, P and Q are two, three. The dividing set is a red curve. And in between the dividing set are, are two curves that are called legendian divides that are that are parallel to the dividing set. I'm not going to draw it because it's going to become super messy. But basically, you have everything for it like this. And you and this is the model that you have. So a neighborhood of your PQ curve. If you take it out, what you're going to see in this tori, in this torus, is an annulus. Okay, and that's an, that annulus has a very specific picture and characteristic foliation. If we cut the the, the complement of LPQ by that annulus, we obtain the complement of L. Union, this joint union uh, and the standard neighborhood of Allegheny, which is something that we understand. So the analysis is, is kind of uh, is kind of key in the in this game. Wait, how is how does this analysis look? So basically, is again is polluted by Allegheny's. All these guys are isotopic, isotopic to LPQ, and then it's going to have a bunch of, of dividing curves like this. It's an even number of dividing curves. Actually, the number is, is always even, and you can compute it to be two times Q minus Sarton Menekan of the underlying Legendian times P. Okay, what is important for us, and this, this is key, this is the, the, the sufficiently large for a, a assumption is that this number, the, this assumption implies that this number N, so it's twice a number N, the number of dividing curves is bigger than one. So we have the, 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 the complement. If you take out the annulus, it's a standard neighborhood of L. The joint union, something contactomorphic to the complement of L. And when you have a generalized cable, the situation is completely analogous. But you have many annuli, many annuli. And it's kind of confusing, but it's really the same thing. OK? There's some, some annulus that are kind of nice. We have a really nice picture that if you take it out, that is that that you can describe everything in terms of unions of standard neighborhoods and the complement of the initial link. Okay, that is a takeaway. These annulus are really nice and super super convenient for us. So this kind of configuration of annulus is what is called an N standard annulus, and N is this number here. Okay, it's half the number of dividing curves. Great. So what can we say about, about this? So if we are trying to, to, to prove something about the, the contact geometry or the space of contact structures in the complement, we need to understand the space of embeddings of these and standard angles. So those are embeddings for which the characteristic collision looks as I said. Okay. So we are going to fix one in a, in a general tight contact three manifold, and we are going to consider all the embeddings that are smooth of A into M and coincide with, with this inclusion near the boundary. So everything is fixed near the boundary of that, which is the case that we we, we need to, to, to understand. And we're going, as, we're going also to assume that all these embeddings are smooth as a topic relative to the boundary to the inclusion. OK, we, we don't want to change the path connected component. And inside this space of smooth embeddings, it's a smooth gadget. We have a space of standard, of standard embeddings that are those embeddings for that, that are in standard and loose. OK. So what is the, the, the main technical theorem that allows us to prove everything is that if you have this such an annulus and then the boundary maximizes the twisting number with respect to any given framing. So this means, or in, in my head, means that it does not destabilize. Or now in the head of a, of a convex surface person means that that annulus does not admit non-trivial bypasses in the case that n is bigger than one. And if, if, if n is bigger than one, 
if n is equal one, n equal to one, we assume that in some covering we have the previous the previous the previous situation. So in particular, it should be some covering. It should be a way to unwrap the annular. So if we have all all these all these conditions, then the inclusion is a weak equivalence. Okay. So the the, the the topology of the space of standard annuli with respect to the topology of the space of smooth annuli is is is, is the same. So the motopy type. So what is the, the the corollary of this this result? The corollary is that if you if you if you start with a contact manifold which is tight and you have two two annuli in the in the boundary of this contact manifold, so you have which is M and you have two annuli in the boundary that satisfy all the previous conditions that I said. You can try to glue the two annuli together to build a new contact manifold that is M A side A. So one can prove that that, that what you obtain is tight. And conversely, you can also prove that this this does not require or paper is classical techniques that if 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 the contact if you have a contact structure on on the glued manifold on the smooth glued manifold that is tight that coincide with the given one at the boundary, and in such a way that the smooth annulate that you obtain when you identify a one and a two satisfies all the previous conditions about the fast American number and and m bigger than one or unwrapping in a covering then this contact extractor is obtained by some gluing of a contact extractor on M. And what is important to us is the last part. This is kind of the new part. You do not change the homotopy type by gluing this annular. And this is a consequence of the previous theorem. Okay? So by doing this glue, gluing operation, the space of contact, the homotopy type of the space of contact extractors does not change. So now how goes the proof about the result of, of, of that I spoke about the analyzed cables? So it's basically it's basically using this I mean, a lot of times. So you start with with just in the not case, yeah, in the not in the not cable case, you think you just have one annulus, one annulus, and we say that the complement the annulus divides the complement of the cable into the open neighborhood of the underlying the gendian, which is like g one of s one, and that has a contractible. A space of contact structure because it's the complement of a linear knot that satisfies the C property. So that is something that we knew. Un the joint union, the, the complement of the underlying linear there, or, or something contactomorphic to that. So the space of contact structures is, is, is just, is just a motor equivalent to space of the contact structures on the, on the underlying linear. There. And here we have been using the sufficiently positive condition. It's key to ensure this that N is bigger than one. Okay, and also the TV condition is key to ensure the maximality of the twisting number. The fact that there are no non-trivial bypasses. Okay, so, so I'm just going to see to say quickly a few words about how, how to prove this statement, which is the, the technical theorem. So, so you need to 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 study families of surfaces, your fixed characteristic relation, that is kind of in principle hard. So to, to study this kind of thing, we use a technique that I like to call the microfibration trick that appeared in my, in my work with, with Javier Martin Tarenato and Presas. Uh, and basically it's a receipt to prove weak equivalence between embedding spaces. It has nothing to do with, with contact topology, really. It's about embedding spaces in different, in different categories, okay? Now we're using it for smooth embeddings and, and embeddings with thick characteristic, fixed characteristic relation. So it gives you a receipt, and the receipt is as follows. If you check the following two conditions, then you obtain that the inclusion is a weak equivalence. So the first condition is a density condition. So consider any embedding that is smooth in this case, okay? Any guy here, we have a guy here, and consider a thickening of the guy. So this is the image of the guy. Let's see if I do a reasonable picture. Consider the thickening of the guy. Something like this. Okay, a tubular foot. Any tubular foot. Okay, question. Can you find a guy with the right characteristic foliation which is convex inside this tubular foot? If you can do it for every tubular foot, then that is, we say that the density profit property is fully fulfilled. Okay, that is what is written there. And then the, the second property is the local equivalence. The question is is true the statement in this tubular foot here? So you can assume also because of the equivalence that the, the neighborhood is invariant, but, but basically look at the tubular neighborhood 
and try to prove the theorem there. You know that theorem, the statement at least trying to prove it makes sense because of the density. This is non-empty in the two neighborhood. So if the statement is true there for every two neighborhood, invariant neighborhood, then the microfibration receipt says that the, the inclusion is a weak equivalence. So you need to prove two things. And the density property, if you know a bit about co convex surfaces, uh, is just a, a consequence of, 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 of all the conditions that we have given to the boundary of A and the number N. Th those conditions imply that there are no non-trivial bypasses. So if you have a, a, a smooth embedding and you and you convexify it in a neighborhood, you can also always do that here in this neighborhood. Uh, if the dividing set is different, it's because it should happen a non-trivial bypass. This is Colan on that thing that we said before. But but this cannot happen. So the dividing set should be the right one, and therefore the Foucault equation should be the right one because of the flexibility. That is the density property. And the local equivalence property follows basically from, from the fact that we know. So the, 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 the neighborhood times i is, is also is what is called a standard and a standard solid to, tight solid torus. And we know the contact contact homomorphism group of these things. So it's a vibration argument. This is known because of this, this is kind of like Q1 of S1. So it's contracting or everything. And basically, those are the two main ingredients. And one should check, and I think that I super should stop here. Here, so thank you so much for your attention. Uh, thank you very much. Um, are there any questions from the audience? Um, perhaps. Uh, Perhaps I, I, I have uh, one question. So, um, in the beginning of your talk, you, you were mentioning uh, that um, yes. you're looking at examples where you cannot find a pi, a kernel of pi k, kernel of uh, ion pi k. So, uh, what are your feelings about uh, places where you might have a kernel of pi k? Do, do you, uh, of ion pi k, do, 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 do you expect uh, such things to exist? I mean, that is a, for me the million dollar question is is so my long shot and here I'm uh, maybe I should not see say this on a on something that is getting recorded is is that for k equal to one yes and for k bigger than one I don't know <laughs> I don't know so so so. Maybe not for k bigger than one. I'm not super sure about that, but I have some feelings about this. So, so the thing is that we have technology to 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 prove non-triviality of loops that is not just the smooth topology. So there is the inner contact homology. There are shifts. There are, there are many things. So that that should point in the direction of of that you should be able to find such a such a such an examples. Uh, the second thing is that is. Kind of super hard to to came out with precise examples to to check. So I I, I, mean, I have some some I have some candidates for this. Mm -hmm. Some candidates for this or so loops that maybe are interesting, but for me so so it's, it's super unclear. So for me these things are candidates. For my co-author Mint, he said to me that he thinks that they are not candidates. So it's <laughs> it's unclear what happened. Okay. This is. Thank you very much. We don't know. Any any questions open about families of the Indians and this kind of things? Thank you. Thank you for your question. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 are there any uh, any further questions? Uh, Right, so, so if, if there are no, uh, no further questions, let's let's thank Eduardo again for his beautiful talk. Thank you.